Okay, I got it. All right, everyone. Well, welcome to all of you. Sorry for that little technical blip there at the beginning. Um, I want to welcome everybody to the first episode of Spotlights on Thriving Services. So in this monthly series, my co-host Gabriella Papp and I shine the spotlight on service organizations so you can learn about what they have to offer. Um, we hope our set of quirky questions that we have in store will serve not only to inform, but also entertain a little bit. And um, just a little bit of what you can expect. So we're gonna start out every session with a short overview of um, the, the folks that we're speaking to, and then we'll dive into a little more detail in our questions about leadership, problem solving, collaboration, and other topics. And then we'll have a quick wrap up. So joining us today is the PMO squad. Um, and that the PMO squad is a US-based PMO and project management consulting firm that specializes in agile project management and PMO solutions, all centered around a purpose-driven approach. And representing the PMO squad today is founder and president, Joe Puzz. Say hi, Joe. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Joe is an internationally recognized um, speaker, author, project management innovator, um, and he was named one of the top 15 PMO influencers in the world in 2020 and 2021 by the PMO Global Alliance. Joe's also a co-founder of the Veteran Project Manager Mentor Alliance, which is a nonprofit organization that assists veterans seeking to transition into civilian project management careers. So welcome, Joe. It's so wonderful to have you today. Thank you so much. It's uh, great to be here for the first episode. And We'll see how it goes, right? I mean, this is, I saw the questions and they're not easy, everybody. So this is going to yeah. be fun. We have some excitement in store. And also, I would just want to say a quick congratulations on being named a top influencer. That's quite an accomplishment. Yeah, thanks so much. I, I don't know, you know, what I do to do that. I'm just trying to help be helpful in the industry. So if that makes me an influencer, I, I gladly accept that. And the PMO Global Alliance does a great job working with PMOs out there in the world. And uh, it's really an honor to be nominated by them for, for such a, a distinction. So it's been great. Super. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and get started with some of our content. Um, if you'd like to share with us, you know, an overview of what the PMO squad has to offer, we can start there. Yeah, as you had mentioned, um, Right, we, we do all things project management and it, it doesn't matter the traditional approach or an agile approach, uh, focusing on PMOs, we don't do anything else, right? And when I was a PMO leader uh, back in corporate world, many times we would reach out for consultants to come help us and they didn't specialize in project management, right? They were just general consultant firms, management consultants. And they would come in and they would do a good sales pitch and they would have a, a senior rep on the sales team. But after they won the engagement, they would bring in this junior resource who didn't know anything about PMOs. And ultimately we would end up training him or her on what we were doing. And they would take the information back to their boss and they'd come up with some solution that we paid way too much money for that really was our solution to begin with. So, yeah. After years and years of doing that, I finally said there has to be a better way to help PMO leaders and project managers and agilists out there. Uh, so we created the PMO squad and, and that's been nine years ago now uh, where we have focused on that one thing where we just do project management. Uh, that's great. And then over time, we thought about how, how should we do this better, right? Uh, we've all seen the stats, 50, 55 percent six project success rate. I mean, we can do better than that. And what we found talking with our peers and in the industry and doing our own research was the purpose driven mindset and the purpose driven approach. Too often, there's a disconnect between the people doing the project and the executives approving the project that they they're not aligned on purpose. And those disconnects that we felt with the research we've done and the, and the interviews we've done was driving that wedge between leadership team and project teams. 
and causing those project failure rates. So everything we do now has a purpose-driven mindset to it. Do you want me to advance the slides? Yeah, let's uh, go on to the next one here. Another thing that we've we've recently come up with here is uh, after nine years of working with clients, they're all, they all want to be at number five in six months, right? And what we we've recognized is what we want to make public and talk through with people to help them understand is organizational maturity for project management is a journey, right? You you it's just like a us as humans you as a infant, you're not a teen. As a toddler, you're not an adult, right? I mean, you have to mature and you need to go through the steps of maturation to actually be prepared for the next step. You, you would probably not have a successful PMO if you start out as an ad hoc and then immediately jump into strategic. You wouldn't have developed the skill sets and the capabilities required in steps two and three on the journey. So for us, you know, the old Rome wasn't built in a day. Well, neither is a PMO. And what we try to do is help organizations understand where they are today in their journey. And just like when you go on a, a vacation, hiking through the mountains or rafting down a river, you have a guide that comes and helps you on that, that adventure. And that's what the PMO squad is, right? We're a guide that comes and helps you navigate your journey, no matter where you are and where you're headed. Not everybody has to get to stage five on the journey. Maybe your endpoint is stage three, and that's okay. We can help you get there. So for us, it's helping the, the organizations and PMO leaders out there know there is a journey you're about to go on. We've traveled that journey many times over with organizations in various industries, and we're here to help you to, to navigate and to be able to go through that journey. That's awesome. I really appreciate that you guys recognize that, you know, not everybody has to get to that same end point. I think that's really important, um, a really important message. So I really appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. And then next thing, you know, you had asked uh, us to supply some information about the company. Um, and oftentimes when I attend these, right, the people talk about their you know, services they offer like we just did, but they never talk about the company, right? I mean, what's at the core of who you are? And for us, uh, the PMO squad, we believe anything is possible. Um, and, and that's our core values. It, we're purpose-driven, as we mentioned, both internally and externally with clients. We come out there and we do everything starting with purpose. We believe in outcomes over audits. Um, and, and therefore, we have an outcomes-focused approach. You mentioned at the, the top here our relationship with BPMMA, the Veteran Project Manager Mentor Alliance. So we're service-minded. We give back to the community. Uh, I can see one of our attendees uh, is involved in BPMMA, so it's nice to see one of them joining. Thank you. Uh, integrity always. If we don't have trust of our clients or within our teammates, um, we're gonna break apart. We need to be able to stay together. We build inclusion. We have a very inclusive workforce. We believe our clients should be inclusive. Our industry should be inclusive. So we work uh, actively to be an inclusive organization. Uh, leadership enabled, right? We also, you know, outcomes over audits, but people over process. We want everybody to be able to be a leader. Project management is so important because you are leading a project that was intentionally chosen by an organization. So you have to be a leader and then ultimately empower people. Uh, that's at the core of who we are. So all of those together help you understand who the PMO squad is, right? We believe anything and everything is possible when you work together bonded over a common purpose. That's awesome. Yeah, leadership is something near and dear to my heart. So, you know, that's getting a little more visibility in the project management community lately, especially with all the revamps we see in PMI and everything. So it's super exciting. And it's, I think, really, really important, something that maybe have been a little overlooked previously. So that's awesome to hear. Awesome. All right. So 
Um, we do have a chat open, so I'll encourage our participants that if you have a question or need clarification on something, go ahead and type it in the chat. We'll try to keep an eye on that as best we can. Um, but now we're going to go into our questions. Now that we've heard from Joe about the PMO squad and, and that really helpful information to set the context about who they are, what they do. And um, so I mentioned we have this quirky question set. Um, but it focuses on some of those things that, you know, we would typically engage in discussion when we're, we're trying to partner with the service organization. So our first question, you know, as our industry evolves, so do the challenges that we face. They will also evolve with it. And so I'd like to know, Joe, which superhero or role model would you call to face the biggest challenges for PMOs today and why? I love this one, right? I'm a big uh, Marvel fan and, and watched all the different Marvel movies. So I, it'd be easy to pick a more modern superhero, but I'm going to go old school because I got a little gray in my beard. But for me, it's Batman, right? If if we think about, and again, they've got all the modern Batman movies, but the real ones are, you know, go back to the, the 70s, right? When, when they came out. Mm -hmm. Batman was just a guy. Right. He he didn't have superpowers. And but what he had was, you know, in his case, he was a rich guy. So he had a lot of money and he built this amazing utility belt that no matter the situation, he always had the gadget to be able to get him out of the situation he was in. And I think as project managers, that's what, who we are. We we need to have a belt full of experiences and gadgets and tools that if it's an agile project or traditional project, or, or we have an angry stakeholder, or we have a vendor that's non-responsive, or we have teammates that need assistance, or we need to do something differently, right? We have to be able to reach into that belt and be able to pull out the proper tool at the proper time. And, you know, we don't, we believe in project delivery more than a project management approach, right? If you do stuff agile, I guarantee in your agile approach, you're doing something traditional as well. And if you're doing something traditional, I bet you've done something agile. And if you're doing something hybrid, I bet you're doing something lean, right? I mean, every situation is going to be unique. Every project is unique. Every organization is unique. So for us, I think the key is, is be a Batman, right? Don't rely on just one superpower. Rely on a tool belt full of different tools that's going to help you get through any of the situations that you face. That's awesome. You know, we often talk at, at where I work now, PPG, about tools in the toolbox, right? And we kind of use yeah. that metaphor, but I love the Batman metaphor. <laughs> totally going to steal that at some point, uh, you know, when I'm talking with people about um, using tools in the toolbox. That's awesome. We don't have a right. sidekick, right? We don't have Robin, no. I guess. <laughs> But you know, hey, we all do, right? And for everybody out there, we all have our own sidekick as well. So we can't, we have the superhero, but never forget the sidekick, right? Every superhero right. <laughs> has a sidekick. That's awesome. All right, so our next question, um, you know, we're, 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 when we're looking for somebody to partner with, um, frequently, you know, we want to understand approaches to problem solving, right? So can you tell us, um, you know, in terms of the PMO squad, what's your problem solving tagline? Yeah, for us, you can maybe see it in my background, right? Empowering people to deliver results. Um, people solve problems, right? And, and for us, what we find working with clients, back to when I was running PMOs in the corporate setting, or back when I was a PM working in a PMO, Everybody, when there was a problem, everybody would point to a process and say, well, what's the process say you're supposed to do? But process is static, right? It's usually not dynamic. It doesn't have the ability to flex on the fly for an immediate need. And at the core of that, when we examined that, we said, it's people who are delivering on that process. It's people who are coming up with the process. Um, and again, going back to VPMMA, and we think about military, whether it's the US military or the military in, in any country, when there's a military exercise or mission that takes place, they train and train and train and train on what to do. 
But when the exercise is in place, something invariably goes wrong and they have to be able to react to that. And they react based on the training they've received and the trust that their leaders have in them to be able to execute as people to solve the problem themselves. So borrowing from our, our brothers and sisters in the military, we try to ensure that we've trained our team and have them prepared for the unknown. Right? So how do you prepare for the unknown? You don't know what's coming. How can you prepare for that? Will you build leaders? You enable leaders to be able to make decisions without you, right? We've already given them the guidance and the tools to be successful. So for us, now we empower them. You have the, the dot, right? We say that you've got the dot. You've got the, the responsibility to be able to solve the problems on your own and know with an outcomes-driven approach, right? Results matter. So for us, our tagline, empowering people to deliver results. That's what people want. We want to give them that power. That's what clients want. They want results. So we focus on those two things. Awesome. That's awesome. You know, one of my favorite books is Team of Teams by Stanley McChrystal. You ever read that one? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it, you know, it talks a lot about making leaders and, and taking some cues from, from um, you know, our armed forces. And I think that's a great analogy um, and really good advice for anyone. Okay, so next question, let's move on to the next one. You know, we've seen a shift, as you mentioned, we've talked a little bit about this here from process-driven methods and project manager as team member, you know, more into value-driven frameworks, tools in the toolbox, PM is leader, project manager is leader. So leadership, you know, again, we talked about this before, becoming very much more, much more associated with project management and in the spotlight there. Um, so I'm interested, I'm curious to know, let's say you're making a movie on what it takes to lead. Describe the plot for us. Uh, again, this it was great I had these questions in advance because these are hard, right? I mean, I love movies, right? Uh, it's one of my favorite things, music and movies. I love them both. So it's great we have another music question coming up later. Yep. So rather than describe the plot, I'll actually say the movie that I think is, is potentially, in my view, the best project management movie ever. Awesome. And, and it's not, of course, it has nothing to do with project management. Um, it's Moneyball. Uh, so I'm a big sports fan. And if you haven't seen Moneyball, the plot line is there's an organization, the Oakland A's, who are in a small market, so they don't have as much money as the big teams. And they have to figure out a way to be competitive without having money. And everybody on their staff is trained in the current process. How do we run a baseball team? But they have a, a new leader comes in, the new project manager comes in, Billy Bean, who's still the general manager of the Oakland A's, by the way. So it's a real, it's based on a real life situation. And they encourage everybody to find a different way. Forget the way we've always done it and find a way that gives us the outcomes we want. And they stop relying on scouting. They start using data analytics and metrics. They start looking at culture and personality fit. They move players from positions they are comfortable playing into positions they never played before. Um, you know, they had a catcher who they moved over to first base and he's like, I've never played the infield before. I can't do this. But data analytics said that person has to be on our team. So they used data, they used analysis. They didn't rely on old school process. They went out and looked for results. Um, and at the, the way the movie progresses, and again, this is based on real life events, the team went from a, uh, a seller dweller, right? A, a team that didn't perform well, yeah. to their consistently year after year successful. And now other teams have adopted the way that they run projects or the way that they run their team. Think of it almost as uh, the way they used to do it was traditional project management. They came in with a more agile approach, developing a, what we won't call it traditionally agile, but more hybrid, right? Maybe a water scrum fall or some other sort of hybrid approach to, to delivery. And they executed that. And again, the, the best form of flattery is when people copy you. So even the big money teams now copy them. 
uh, or another small market team, right? The Tampa Bay Rays copy them and they do the same approach and, and um, the Rays have the best record or second, the best record in the American League right now. So it works. Uh, so for me, following that movie, I kept watching it and thinking, man, this is great project management movie to the point where I had our team at the time watch that movie, right? We, we took time out of our day, brought uh, a copy into the office and we watched the movie and talked about it afterwards. So for me, the plot is understanding how to be able to react, how to be able to take traditional and make it modern and use what's going to be results-based, outcomes-focused, and giving the people in your organization the power to change the way it's always been. Like, I love it when we go to a client and I ask them, why do you do that? And they say, well, that's the way we've always done that. And I say, okay, well, well, why have you always done it that way? And they get that look in their eye, right? It's like, well, I don't know. It's just always been that way. So questioning the norm, using leadership skills to not just accept what's there, but to understand why, right? It starts with purpose. We, we, if you have to ask why to be able to identify purpose, and to me, Moneyball identified purpose and then was able to take the actions afterwards to lead from there. Awesome. So if you haven't seen everybody out there, if you haven't seen Moneyball this weekend, everybody run out and rent Moneyball and then send me a message on LinkedIn to let me know what you thought and uh, and let me know if you think it's a good project management movie. I'll have to do that. I've never seen that movie. So I bet my husband has though. <laughs> so. And it's actually a, a great movie, right? It, it, yeah. Aside from that, I mean, Brad Pitt's in it and, and some other yeah. well-known actors. It's not a uh, you know, a secondhand movie. It, it's yeah. a, it's actually a good movie to watch as well. Awesome. Well, that'll be on my weekend roster this weekend. <laughs> yeah. Let me know what you think. Great. Great. All right. So let's move on to the next question. Um, collaboration is essential to success in any partnership. So if you had to write a book on promoting and sustaining collaboration within teams, <laughs> between teams, what would be the title? Yeah, I think it, this one I had to think long and hard about, right? It makes me, and then I wanted to write a book afterwards. Um, <laughs> uh, but the title I came up with was Catch Me When I Fall. Um, because this goes back to the military part of it again, right? We build trust in people. And when you trust somebody, you'll do anything for them, right? And it's sustainable because you don't have to work at it. It just, there, there will be ups and there'll be downs. I will fall and I trust that you will catch me. And to me, that's, that's sustainability. So when I think about just personal situations or professional situations, <clears throat> excuse me, whenever we're collaborating, I always wanna be with people I trust. Um, and then there's the, you know, the team building exercise where you stand with your back to somebody and you, you lean back and they catch them, right? So that was the image that came to mind when that you asked this question was they do those team building exercises intentionally, right? It's to build trust in your teammates. And what better way than to create a visual <clears throat> and then follow it up with a book to talk about that? Because as project managers or PMO leaders uh, working with clients or even just internal, you don't do it by yourself. You can't right? A project manager has a team. A PMO yep. leader has an organization that supports him or her. So without that trust, without that understanding that I'm going to fall at some point, and you're going to fall at some point, I will be there to catch you. And please let you know that I have trust in you, that you're going to catch me. Um, those are the sorts of things that I think are really impactful. Uh, and deal with leadership. So for me, that's that's the book I want to write. That's awesome. That's awesome. You know, I've had um, the fortune of working in a couple of high performing teams over my career. You know, they're kind of few and far between where all the planets align and everything comes together and you kind of find yourself in that situation. And I say that's one of the things that makes the difference in terms of trust. And it's not only trust, like many, almost every team that I'm involved in you know, I trust my teammates are going to do their work, you know, they're going to collaborate with me. Um, but there's like a level beyond that too. Like when I was having a bad day or my teammates were having a bad day, 
we just did these little things to kind of swoop in and help each other. And I think the, the root and basis of that was, was trust that we could do that. And we knew that people would do that for us. So I think that's really awesome. Yeah. There's, there's a story I've told in some other webinars um, about Rich Carlton, right? They, they consistently year after year win the award for top customer service. And they have a, and part of their, mission is they empower their employees to do whatever is right. Every employee is empowered. I think it's to spend up to $2,000 without manager approval to make sure the customer experience is good. And I'm out here in Arizona, uh, down in Tucson, there's a Rich Carlton. And this was in the press where a, a little boy had his Thomas the Tank train uh, that he, he lost. He couldn't oh. find it. And they, they went to check out and the parents said, hey, if you happen to find our toy, let us know. We, we'd like to get it back. Our child is really upset over this. So they went and looked and they couldn't find it anywhere. And most hotels would stop right there. Mm -hmm. right? That would be the end of it. But that front desk clerk after work that day went out and bought a brand new Thomas the Tank train for the boy. And again, most would stop there. Uh, but they didn't. They went around different places in the resort and took pictures. So it looked like uh -huh. Thomas the Tank was out having an adventure and he That's didn't get awesome. back to the room in time to leave with the family. So they sent the, the, the toy to the family with all of these pictures and a letter about how he was on an adventure and that he was upset because he missed his family too and wanted to get home. That sort of feeling right there of catch me when I fall, right? That family yeah. fell, that little boy fell. And that employee took the extra effort because they were empowered to deliver a, a result for that, that family. To me, that's, awesome. that's, that's the epitome of what we need to be doing as consulting firms. We have to be able to catch you when you fall, just like Ritz Carlton does over and over again. And that's why they win all these awards for customer satisfaction. That's awesome. That's a great story. Uh, enjoyed that. Okay, next question. Um, you know, ESG policies or environmental social governance policies are kind of more and more in their own spotlight these days. Um, and sustainability is a big part of that. So I'm interested to know if receiving an award, how would your customers thank you for influencing their sustainability? Yeah, this was probably the hardest question, right? The, the industry we're in isn't naturally right. a sustainability, but you know, I've got a, a buddy up in, in the Boston area, Rich Maltzman, uh, who makes a living out of this now, right? That he's, he's known for his project management on sustainability. So I was thinking, trying to build my inner Rich Maltzman, what would I yeah. say here? <laughs> um, and for us, I think one thing we try to do is PMOs and project managers over report or report the wrong things. And it leads to paper waste, right? Um, having the different, and of course we've, we've gone to electronic tools and, and there's not as much printing, but there's still a lot of printing that takes place out there. Yeah. So we should be thinking, and we work with our clients on building the appropriate dashboards so that it's self-service as opposed to printing and sending and having people uh, waste paper that doesn't need to be. So with a lean mindset and a waste reduction mindset, using the right tools, using the right data, using the right dashboards to be able to get you to be able to be prepared to show what value your PMO is generating, not just what's the status of a project. There's a very big difference uh, between that and, and I would say probably 95% of the clients we work with, I ask always to see their, their PMO dashboard, right? Let me see what your dashboard is. Yeah. And it's red, yellow, green, the list of projects, budget, scope, uh, and schedule. How are we doing? And I always ask, well, what would an executive do with that? If, if you're, if you have 50 projects in your dashboard, that 49th project that the executive probably doesn't even know exists, what does it matter to him or her that that project is red, yellow, or green? What is, where's the value we're providing? So I always work to say, let's redo this dashboard 
thinking about what can we talk about and present to executives that actually will have meaning to them, right? Stakeholder engagement is the number one lead to project success. Well, let's engage stakeholders with proper dashboards. For instance, how many open executive issues need to be resolved and what's the aging of those issues on a project that's now read? That's an immediate item an executive can take action on. And by presenting a dashboard that way, because I guarantee you that executive gets that dashboard, the current one, prints it out, looks at it, crumples up in a ball and throws it in the garbage can, and we're wasting and killing trees. So for me, I'm making a bit of a stretch, I think, on this one, but I That's think okay. using the right dashboards and the right data would be where clients would say, thank you for getting us to focus on this. Sweet. I think that was a great answer. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right, so you know we've mentioned before collaboration was a key factor in contributing to success, um, but so is culture. So as a service organization, I'd be willing to bet you've um, had to work with many different cultures with your with your clients um, and have had to integrate with that. So let's say you're hosting an event to celebrate that culture integration with a partner organization. Tell us what the theme of that event might be. Yeah, for, for us, it, it's always it's going to be purpose, right? It, it's going to be tied to that. Um, let me tell you another story. We had a client, um, and they're in an industry where they take homes and prepare them for renters at an affordable rate so that people don't have to rent out of an apartment complex. They can rent into a home. Okay. And a large percentage of their... Um, clientele or at the renters are first time homeowners, oftentimes single parents, and on occasion, um, single parents who are leaving an abusive relationship. So when we went in to help them build a PMO, unrelated to any of that stuff, right? I asked, I interviewed, uh, or we as an organization interviewed um, every manager every director, vice president, and some of the employees in their IT department, because this PMO is for the IT. And I said, what's the purpose of your organization? And they said, well, in our in IT, our purpose, and I'm summarizing, uh, their bottom line answer was, in IT, our purpose is to enable the software to help our organization function. Typical answer that I would expect from an IT department. Mm -hmm. I then went and asked the director of marketing, for the entire company. I said, what's the purpose of your organization? And they told me it was to provide safety to those in need who've never had an opportunity to own a home before. That's awesome. So I went back to the, the CIO and the leaders in the IT department. And I said, do you understand the disconnect? You're running projects to enable technology when you have a company that's trying to provide safety for first time homeowners. What if we change the purpose of your PMO and the measurements in your projects, instead of saying, are we on time or on budget? We could have a metric that says, how many lives did we save today? How many homes did we put people into today? And we start measuring projects that way because when we ask at, at a go live, people to work on a weekend or maybe work long hours because of projects behind, if it's, you know, our projects behind, well, we're only putting technology in. Who cares, right? I mean, it doesn't matter. But if you say, can you work late today? There's that one family out there that's gonna need to get into that home today. And if this project is able to get them over to that point, then we had a successful outcome. Who's gonna say no to that, right? When, when we bond around purpose, when we bond around that common thinking of there's a greater cause for what we're doing, we start accelerating. So after time, right, when, they, when they, you have that mindset in place, all of a sudden your results start improving because you get to see that outcome. Um, I'll give you a, one more example here. There, there was a company uh, that hired a consulting firm, wasn't us, uh, so I can't take credit for this one, but I love, <laughs> I love the idea. And they produce heart valves, right? Somebody has to manufacture the heart valves that when people need open heart surgery, they, they get out there, right? And the organization's been around for a long time and their production had kind of become stagnant, right? They weren't able to increase output. 
So they hired a consulting firm to come in and they asked them, what can we do to increase efficiency, output, and improve profitability? At the same time, we want to improve employee satisfaction. So a pretty big lift that they're asking from this consulting firm. And after a month of analysis and observation, the, they came back to the executives and said, all right, we have the solution. The executives are all jazzed up and they said, what is it? We want you to put two posters up in your building. <laughs> They're like, what a letdown. I mean, do you want us to put two, <laughs> two posters up? Why would we do that? What's going to be on the poster? And they said, because everybody in your organization on that assembly line and the production facility is producing heart valves. What they don't know is they're saving lives. So I want a poster at the doorway where everybody comes in that is a picture of a person who received your heart valve. And they will know every day why they're coming to work. And then in your cafeteria, we want to have a picture of some of your employees, which you don't even know. Some of your employees have the heart valves that you produce inside them right now. Wow. We want pictures of those employees up in your break room. So every time somebody goes in, they'll see one of their coworkers that they've helped with what they're manufacturing, what they're producing. Again, all of this is subtle changes with a giant impact because you're rallying around purpose of what we're doing, right? We don't do it because it's just a job. We're doing it with an outcome. It could be saving lives. It could be any other item that is important to your organization, but I guarantee you it's not just delivering a project, right? Yeah. We don't implement a CRM system. There's something bigger than implementing a CRM system, and that's what you have to attach to. So any sort of cultural event we have with a partner, absolutely 100% would be tied to purpose. Awesome. That's great. You know, I've, I've heard the purpose-driven PMO a while back, you know, when I maybe attended a conference where you were speaking or one of your colleagues was speaking and I heard it, I understood it. Um, but, you know, until I heard some of those examples, it didn't quite hit home for me. And that, that was a really good example that helps to hit home exactly what that means and how to use it and incorporate it into your organization. So it's really good stuff. Yeah. Um, all right. So, you know, one of, I'm going to dive a little bit kind of into one of the purpose points for the PMO leader community, right? So one of those purpose points is building a community, which, you know, doesn't happen overnight and doesn't happen in isolation. So I'm curious, what would be your signature song for what it takes to build a community? Yeah, this one uh, was a little bit easier. Again, I, I love music, uh, all kinds of music. And uh, the, the song that immediately jumped out to me was Imagine by John Lennon, right? Okay. Uh, imagine what's possible when we're sharing, right? I mean, that's the whole spirit of that song. There's a world without borders. Um, when we think in the PMO space, again, earlier we had mentioned the PMO Global Alliance was a great organization. Mm -hmm. There's the House of PMO, that's a great organization. Uh, IPMA, PMI, right? There's a whole bunch of, of organizations out there and we all build borders around our space. And for the PMO leader, right? When we think about that, it's actually saying, let's break down those borders. We're all PMO leaders. And imagine what it would be like if we could all live in peace, if we could all share, if we could all give to one another, regardless of my allegiance or where my certification came from, I'm still a PMO leader, right? Uh, and, and to me, that's something that we have to imagine because it doesn't exist until we created the PMO leader. So that was the mindset for this song is when we build community, don't build community based on what's happening today. Build community around what is possible, right? What we can imagine to, to be. And that's the whole point of it, right? If I'm in the United States or I'm in Malaysia or I'm in Abu Dhabi, doesn't matter where I'm located we have the same problems trying to lead a PMO. I may have gotten a, a certification or I may have a methodology or I may have an approach that's completely different than yours. Because guess what, there, I'm Batman. There's multiple ways to be able to solve a problem. But where do I go to ask somebody about their experiences? I go, I go to my community, right? I wanna go there and find out. 
So to me, we imagined it and it, it exists now, right? The PMO leader is now a community where you can go that's borderless that, and borderless both figuratively and literally. It, right? It's for all countries yeah. and it's for all organizations. We don't promote one over the other. We're agnostic in our approach. We're agnostic in our certification mindset. We just believe that you have to be able to go, oh, I think we, did we pop up something on screen? Oh, that was my screen. Uh, something popped up on my screen. That was weird. <laughs> um, so that's, that's my song, is Imagine. Uh, by it's a awesome. great song also, right? I, yeah. always, I always love listening to that song. I agree, I agree. Awesome. All right. Well, I really appreciate that. So the, we're, we're down to our last question. And I think this is my favorite. And it's, it's really simply just for fun, uh, but to learn a little more about uh, you guys at the same time at the PMO Squad. So if your company were a food, what would it be and why? Hmm. I love music. I love movies and I love food, right? So this is great. For, for me, it's ice cream right? Ice because cream. ice cream is great, it, but it doesn't matter what flavor. Everybody has their own taste, right? So that's what I think we are, is we, we have a purpose-driven approach for everything we do. So that's our ice cream. But the flavor of ice cream becomes unique based on the client and situation we're working with. Sometimes it's vanilla, sometimes it's chocolate, sometimes it's strawberry, or sometimes it's all of them combined, right? Sometimes it's Rocky Road, Right. So for us, having the ability to be core to what we are, right, we're ice cream, we're the purpose driven mindset, but being adaptable to fit into what each organization needs so that we're able to satisfy their hunger for what their problem is. Um, so for us, it's ice cream. Man, now I, my stomach was just grumbling. Just yeah. talking about that. <laughs> and it's early here in Phoenix, but I want to get some ice cream. So what's your favorite type of ice cream? For me, uh, butter pecan or butter almond is my favorite. Mint chocolate chip close behind, but uh, butter almond is, is mm, I love it. Nice. I'm a, I'm a chocolate girl, so it's got to have chocolate somewhere in there. <laughs> hey, chocolate, chocolate's good. I, I have no problem with chocolate either. There, there are very <laughs> few ice cream flavors that I don't. I know. <laughs> Same here. Um. All right, so that was the last question uh, we had. Um, I encourage everybody to, um, if you have a question for Joe um, or a question about the PMO squad, type it into the chat. But we do have a couple minutes here and I wanted to um, maybe just ask a couple other things of you, Joe. I, I know there's this other thing called um, project management office hours that you may be involved in. So I was wondering if you could just speak about that for, for a minute and what that's all about. Yeah, so we, uh, the PMO squad sponsors a live radio show uh, that we also release as a podcast, Project Management Office Hours. And we've, that show's now been around for four years. We're over 40 million downloads, which blows my mind. I can't believe yeah. that that's possible. Uh, but that just shows the power of project management and the interest around the world. So every other week, we interview live project management leaders from around the world. We've had guests on from Vietnam, Israel, Brazil, Germany, Honduras, Zambia, the U.S., Canada, the U.K. I mean, again, it's, it's a Australia, um, a, a truly global list of people we've had. And we try to talk to them about being people, right? What is it like to be a person um, in our industry? And what have you learned? Um, so, you know, check it out. I, I think they're fun. Yeah. Marissa Silva uh, was on. And you had mentioned I, I was in the top 15 PMO influencers in the world. Um, that comes from the PMO Global Alliance. Americo Pinto was a guest. Bill Dow yeah. is in the final four. He is a guest. Laura Bernard's in the final four. She's a guest. Peter Taylor won that award last year. He's been a guest. That's awesome. So we, we interview lots of folks, uh, Portugal, India, again, all over the world. So if, if you're interested in being a guest or, or listening to the shows, check it out. Yeah. Yeah. I've listened to a few episodes. I, 
you know, I'm a working mom of two, so my free time's a little bit limited, but um, I've really enjoyed and have learned some things listening to the few episodes that I've been able to. Um, so I'd highly recommend it to everybody. We did get one question in the chat. Um, so the question is, have you matured clients in the PMO quickly and sustainably? How have you matured clients in the PMO quickly and sustainably? Yeah, this, this is the frequent request from clients. We want to mature quickly. Well, again, that's hard to do, right? Because the maturation takes time. So a lot of variables come into play. What's the size of your company? What's the purpose of your PMO? Not all PMOs have the same purpose. Where are you trying to get in the journey? Are you, are you currently at a one and only trying to get to a two? Um, so we always caution at the beginning to say maturation takes time. Uh, another thing that I do for our community is I'm a judge in the PMO Global Awards. And right now we're down to the final four, uh, the best four PMOs in the world. And they, part of their presentation to say, uh, to be judged is what is their journey? How long have they been in their path? And all of them to get to be the best have taken, you know, a decade, right? It's taken a yeah. long time to get mature. So we try to understand that there's a need to improve quickly and we try to accelerate the maturation process, but we also want to set expectations with our client up front. This will take time. Uh, this will take patience and you have to be able to support the organization to be able to get there. Organizational change management mm -hmm. components need to come into play. But if you're a level one organization in that journey with ad hoc project management, and you're trying to get to level three organizational project delivery, that's probably at minimum a 12 to 18 month effort uh, to just get to that stage, not to excel in that stage, right? right. Probably another year to be good within stage three. So we, we don't encourage speed, we encourage outcomes. Uh, and for us, that's more important. And getting the organizational buy-in to that is essential. That's the purpose-driven component up front having the organization buy into that awesome awesome so another question i had um is there anything that you want to highlight coming up for the pmo squad next year in 2022 any big events or speaking or yeah, absolutely. It, and i it, i don't know if we have a final list yet but one item uh we actually just wrapped up uh, yesterday, the Plan View user conference called Plan View uh, Accelerate. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they're a global company, right, with solutions from around the world. And we were sponsors. PMO Squad sponsored uh, was one of the sponsors for that event, and it was awesome, right? It was great to be able to interact with PMO leaders around the world. Uh, so we'll be sponsoring that again next year. Um, out here in Arizona, the Arizona State University puts on a project management summit um, nice. and VPMMA is involved in that. We have a track for veterans this year in that uh, that conference. Uh, PMO Global Alliance again will be with that. We speak at PMI chapters all around the world. Um, I know you're in Pennsylvania. We'll, we had spoken at the Pittsburgh chapter yep. and, and others. So for us, uh, I don't have the complete list for 2022, yeah. but guarantee we'll be at industry events. We'll be at PMI chapters. We'll be within the PMO leader uh, and different events that, yeah. that have been going on there. So lots of stuff coming up in 2022. Awesome, awesome. Um, so I think the last question I want to ask today is, um, you know, first, well, first, let me thank you for your time. Um, this information has been super helpful in understanding what you guys have to offer and, um, you know, about the PMO squad. Um, if people are interested in learning more and tapping into your services or just getting into contact with you or the PMO squad, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, I, I, I'm going to answer that question, but I just saw a question pop up in the Q&A section. So oh, okay. not in the chat, but in the Q&A. So I'm going to okay. oh, I'm yep, gonna answer that because okay. uh, it because it is a great question. How do you convince senior management who does not see a value or ROI in setting up a PMO? And, and this probably isn't the answer that you're going to expect, but I say you don't convince them. 
right? Why would you ever want to set something up that executives don't support? You, you will fail. There is no question in my mind that you will no longer be the leader of that PMO in probably two years time because executives do not support it. So until you get to the point where they do support it, so I don't think convincing is the right word. Maybe it's influence is a better word there. But that's sitting down and doing the um, purpose-driven mindset. The, at the beginning of building a purpose-driven PMO is a facilitated session with your executive team. And we go through a series of exercises to understand what they think a PMO should do. Because PMO leaders frequently build PMOs for themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's why they fail. We should be building PMOs for the organization. And that's when they succeed. Those are purpose-driven PMOs. Right. So the convincing or the influencing to me is a discussion up front about what are the goals and objectives that we want to achieve? What is the um, span of control that the PMO has? What's the authority that it has? What would be successful outcomes? that would show that a PMO is successful and then creating like a 15 second soundbite that the executive signed off and say the PMO does X to generate value for our organization to ensure that we gain competitive advantage. What's the X? Yeah. Right. And that's what you have to do to convince your, your executive leaders, right? It's an influencing them to build a PMO to achieve something. It's an outcomes focused mindset with a purpose driven beginning. Those would, that would be the exercise I would uh, offer up. But if they're not on board with that, yeah. don't even build a PMO. It won't work. Now, Good going advice. back to your, Good advice. your, your, uh, your other question yeah. is uh, the PMO squad.com. Of course, our website uh, to go out there and connect with us. I'm out there on every social media channel. You know, you can connect to the radio show uh, through the podcast. Any podcast platform that you listen to has it. Um, and on LinkedIn, certainly go out there and connect with us on LinkedIn. Uh, my email, if you want to connect with me on email, I'm open to that as well. It's joe.puzz, P U S Z at the PMO squad.com. Um, so we're open, we're transparent. Uh, we're out there to help the industry. We're trying to be service minded. We're trying to be inclusive uh, within the industry. So we're, we're available. However you want to get to us, we'll, we'll connect and, and be happy to respond. Awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, thanks again, Joe. Really appreciate your time and this great information that you've supplied for us today. Um, I'm gonna say this, everyone, thank you all also as well for attending. Um, this kind of concludes our spotlight on the PMO squad today, but be sure to join us for our next event, which will be happening, our next episode will be happening on October 21st when my co-host Gabriella Papp shines the spotlight on another great service organization. So, you know, more details will be coming out on the PMO leader on who we'll, we'll highlight there and in social media. So until then, be sure to check it out. And again, thanks for your time and take care, stay safe and have a great day, everyone. Thank you so much. It was fun. It was, I agree. Take care. <laughs>